morning, everyone. As you can see, Pastor Jose is not here. He's in, uh, he and James are in Oklahoma helping Joseph out. So once again, I'm so blessed to be able to minister the word with you. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 121. I lift my eyes towards the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Oh, that is so nice. God doesn't sleep. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. The Lord protects you. The Lord is a shelter right by your side. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect you, thank you so much, from all harm. He will protect your life. The Lord will protect your coming and going both now and forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful sound, Lord. Lord, thank you for making it a reality in our life that you are a protector. And as we open your word, Lord, and look at how you have been demonstrating your protection to us, I pray, O oh God, that we will have an open heart that is always grateful and appreciative for everything that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, this psalm, Psalm 121, a part of uh, the services of the Anglican, Anglicans, I think um, uh, Protestant, Catholic, um, and then they have set it to music. Okay, hold on, let me just... Okay, if you, for this morning service, please have your Bible with you because we have a lot of scriptures. Okay, and so if you will look at your Bible from Psalm 120, turn to Psalm 120, right beside 121, of course, all the way to Psalm 134. Do you notice what is so common in all those Psalms? Let me see how good you are, guys. What is the common thing? From Psalm 120 all the way to Psalm 134. Yes, very good. It says they're a song of ascents. So, why are they called a song of ascents? Okay, when you say that you are ascending, what does it mean? You're going up, right? Like in music, when you are, your voice is ascending, the, the tone is uh, going higher on the, on the keyboard or on the octave. Now, when you say the opposite, when you are descending, what, what are you doing now? You are going down. When I was doing my outline, I was reminded of the Korean drama that I, that I watched, right? How many of you watched... Uh, What's that? Crash landing. No one? No, Jessica and I, we watched it. Maricel, ayaw niyo pang umamin. Irene, okay. Oh, of course, Shia is my classmate. <laughs> uh, we are the only romantics in this room. Okay. So supposedly, the heroine, she did not fall from the sky. She descended from the sky. Okay. And so going up, uh, like you ascend to, what's the famous mountain in Nepal where everybody has it in their bucket list to climb? Mount Everest. Okay. And so, th the reason why it's, a, it's called a song of ascent from Psalm 120 to 134, can you show us a picture please? Okay, where does my help come from? What's the, first what's the first action that's being done in verse 1? Lifting my eyes to the mountains. So mountain is supposed to be high, okay? And so what does this refer to? This refers to, we have a picture. This refers to Mount Zion, okay? 
Mount Zion is where Jerusalem is, right? And during those days in the Old Testament, what do they do in Jerusalem? What do they have in Jerusalem? The temple. And so uh, God has mandated Israel to go up to the temple. How many times a year? Okay, three times a year. Our, uh, our ministry of the men and women called... <laughs> Matagal na hindi nag-meeting, hindi ka na maalala. <laughs> okay, the tent makers, it started because Pastor Jose um, uh, encouraged the men to do this. What are those three festivals that we are supposed that Israel was supposed to be celebrating three times a year. Okay. Open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 16, 16. Okay. All your males are to appear three times a year before the Lord your God in the place he chooses. And what's the choice of place of God? What was the choice of place? The temple in Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, the Festival of the Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of Shelters. It says here, what is the requirement when you go to the temple? What is the requirement? No one is to appear before the Lord empty-handed. What does empty-handed mean? Okay, your hand doesn't have anything. That's empty-handed, no offering. So do not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Do you know that in this church, me, I personally very blessed because we have a member here who, if I am not mistaken, uh, whenever he comes, whenever they come to church, they don't fail, they never fail to come to the Lord Empty-handed. No, mali, mali English ko. They, they never fail. Sama ba? They never fail to come to the Lord empty-handed. That means every service, if I'm not mistaken, they always have an offering aside from their tithe. I am so blessed because me, I, even me, myself, I'm not able to do that. And so verse 17 says, Every ma everyone must appear with a gift suited to his means. That means to say, based on your ability. And it says here, according to what? To the blessing the Lord your God has given you. So that means to say, God doesn't require equal offering or equal tithe. It's what? Based on? The blessing that you receive. So if you have no job, does God expect you to give an offering or a tithe? No. But if you are, if you are earning or you have an increase or you have rental, you have extra income, God is expecting something from that because it belongs to Him. Okay? That's why I'm going through this is because we are not able to claim Jesus, God as our protector, by the way, my, 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 uh, my topic is God, our protector, if you're not able to do all these things that is required out of us. Because some of us, we expect the promises, we claim the promises, but we will never get it unless we become obedient to what God says. Okay? We, will, we will see that because we will be studying the life of David this morning and later on tonight. Okay, so when they went up to, the, you see, that's, uh, that's Mount Zion. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the area where bumili ba ko kay Sister, what's that? Sister Eden. Sister Eden's not here. Oh, the old people that came with us to the trip to Israel. Ati Mina. Okay, can you imagine we went over 2,000 feet above the ground. We went up the mountain up to Mount Zion, and we, in, we went around it, and that's the Temple Mount. If you will be able to see, do you have a picture a, a little bit to the right? Okay, that's, that's the old ruins already, but in the Temple Mount, you will see there, we saw the two gates. 
where you you can Google it. Look at it. Look for the pictures in your computer. That's the gate where Jesus is gonna be coming back. That's where he will land, and that's where he's gonna come back for his kingdom, where he will establish Jerusalem. That's why we'll also learn today why Jerusalem is such a significant place in in um in our lives. Okay, although we are not from there, it's very significant. That's where Jesus will be coming back. That's why Pastor Jose will always teach us that our timetable is based on what's happening in Israel. And it looks like he is coming soon. Okay? They're trying to make peace, but we know that's only false peace. And so these Psalms, Psalm 120 to 134, whenever the pilgrims are going up, that's why it's a song of ascents, to the temple, to Jerusalem, they would be singing these psalms. They set it to music. Okay? That's why I lift my eyes towards the mountain. What's the name of the mountain that he is referring to, the psalmist? Mount Zion. Can we say it, Mount Zion? Okay. So now I want you to turn to Psalm 87. It says here, The city he founded is on the holy mountains. The Lord, the Lord loves Zion city gates more than all the dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said about you, the city of God. That's why Jerusalem is also called the city of God, the city of David, because David was the one who conquered that. Okay? So Mount Zion is the, way, the, way, the, why, the reason why they lift up their eyes to the mountains, because Mount Zion is the place where Yahweh or God dwells in those days because of course now we know god dwells in our hearts okay turn your bibles to isaiah 8 18 here i am with the children the lord has given me to be signs and wonders in israel from the lord of armies who dwells on you're not reading your bible who dwells on mount zion okay that's isaiah 8 18 okay I have, I have 21 pages of outline. Okay, Psalm 74, verse 2. Remember your congregation, which you purchased long ago and redeemed as a pride for your own possession. Remember Mount Zion, where you dwell. Okay, so we have established that Mount Zion is the place where God dwells in those days okay and also the place where he is king turn to isaiah 24 verse 23 okay. the moon will be put to shame and the sun disgrace this is talking about what's going to happen in the last days because the lord of armies will reign as king on mount zion in jerusalem and he will display his glory in the presence of his elders Okay. So Jesus is coming back to Jerusalem in Mount Zion. Okay. Although right now Mount Zion is occupied by, uh, by, uh, by the Muslims. Okay. I mean a portion of it. The entire Mount Zion is not occupied by Israel. And then Mount Zion is where um, he, he also installed David as king. Okay. Um, Psalm 2, verse 6, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Of course, this is double, double meaning. It's not only David, but it's also Jesus who is coming back soon. Okay? So, if you will look at that, Mount Zion is supposed to be a southern hill by Jerusalem. Okay? And you... Um, it's located outside the city walls of the old city. Those things are the old, are the old city walls. See the, it's, you see the walls? Do we have other pictures or that's the only picture? Okay. And then it was the highest place where the temple was built. Okay. For those of us who went to Israel, do we still remember? Of course. Okay. It was made by David. He made it the capital of his kingdom. And therefore, because he built it, what is it called? What was it called? The city of David. Okay. So 
for those of you who wants to see it in person, save your money. Our next trip to Israel will be 2022. Okay, so you have, you have more than enough time to, to save up for it. Okay. So I told you it's elevated about 2,500 feet above the ground. Let's look at 2 Samuel 5. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem against the Jebusites who inhabited the land. Who was, li who was living in the land? Who was living in Jerusalem at the time? The Jebusites. The Jebusites had said to David, you will never get in there. See, they were telling David, David, you cannot conquer us. Even the blind and lame can repel you, thinking David can get in here. So they were saying, even, even the blind, imagine people who can see and the lame, they, they, can, they can ward you off from entering Jerusalem. Okay? That's how they were mocking or underestimating David. Yet David did capture the stronghold of Zion. You know why it's a stronghold? Because it's up in the mountain, right? If you are going to attack a mountainous place, or like Masada is up in the mountains, who will have a hard time? The one defending the fort or the people trying to get into the fort? The people who were attacking, right? The people who are attacking, trying to get into the fort. Because it is easier to go down than to go up. Okay? But yet, David did capture the stronghold of Zion. That is the city of David. He said that they who attacks the Jebusites must go through the water shaft to reach the lame and the blind who are despised by David. For this reason, is it said, the blind and the lame will never enter the house. Uh, David was so smart. He entered through the water shaft. You will see there, we, went, we walked through the water shaft, right? We went underground and we saw how they, they would enter from the outside wall into the city of David. David took up residence in the stronghold, which he named the city of David. He built it up all the way around from the supporting terraces inward. David became more and more powerful, and the Lord, the God of armies, was with him. Why did David become more powerful and powerful? Because the Lord was with him. You will see the protection of David. Okay? Um, um, God made him so powerful that all his enemies were afraid of him. We know that from, from, from our studies. Okay? Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Chronicles 5. This is the time when the temple has been completed. Who built the temple? Huh? Okay. Why not David? Okay, because his hands were stained with blood. Blood of who? Blood of who? Whose blood stained the hand of David? Huh? Uriah. Right? God did not, God, it didn't bother God that he killed his enemies. What bothered God was he arranged for the killing of Uriah. David didn't actually kill Uriah, but he arranged for the killing of Uriah. That's why even here for murder, you don't have to do the actual killing, but you can be the person who paid for the killing. You are still considered a murderer. So 2 Chronicles 5 verse 1, So all the work Solomon did for the Lord's temple was completed. Then Solomon brought the consecra consecrated things of his father David, the silver, the gold, and all the utensils, and out them in the treasuries of God's temple. Okay. At that time, Solomon assembled at Jerusalem the elders of Israel, all the tribal heads, the ancestral chiefs of the Israelites, in order to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord up from the, from what? From where? From the city of David, that is Zion, going into the, where was the Ark of the Covenant going? Okay, the temple. Okay, remember John spoke about the Ark of the Covenant last Friday? What was inside the Ark of the Covenant? Aside from the Ten Commandments. Huh? 
Oh, the staff of Aaron. And then? Okay, a jar of manna. Okay, and what was guarding the Ark of the Covenant? The two cherubims. Okay, and so that was the story. David wanted a place for the, for the Lord, so he took the he wasn't the one who took it. It was already Solomon who was able to do it because Solomon was the one who built the temple according to the command of the Lord. So in Second Chronicles chapter 3, you go back. Okay? Then Solomon began to build the Lord's temple in Jerusalem on... Where was the Lord's temple built? Mount... Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the site David had prepared on the threshing floor on Ornan, floor of Ornan or Araunah, the Jebusite. Okay. Who, used to, who used to occupy Jerusalem? The Jebusites. Okay. So Mount Moriah has two memories for us. What was that? Based on this memory, what was it? Okay, open your Bibles. Remember, um, David took the census of the people. What, was that, what does that mean? He had the number of soldiers of Judah and Israel counted. And then that upset God. Why did it upset God that David took a census? Okay, because David was saying... We won, we were victorious in all our battles because of the men and because of me. I'm the leader. He failed to put his trust in, in God. Remember, all this time, prior to this census, David was always putting his trust in God. That's why God was always helping him because he was fully trusting God. Look at 1 Chronicles 21. Okay. Chapter, verse 13, David answered God. So this is after David took the census. I'm in anguish. Please let me fall in. He was in ang anguish because he knew he upset the Lord. See, look at the heart of David. He knew right away when he does something that would upset God. And it puts him in anguish. Okay? That means to say he gets hurt too when he hurts God. Hopefully, all of us are the same. But then, God told him, ah, di ka makakalusot, David, because you put your trust, you took away your trust from me, uh, you will be punished for it. And so, God gave, God gave um, David three choices. Number one, a three-year famine. Number two, what's number two? What's the number two choice? He will be pursued by his enemies. And number three was three days of plague. Is it three days or two days of the plague? How many days of the plague? First Chronicles chapter 21. Okay, so he was given three choices and he had to choose one. And David said, please let me fall into the Lord's hands because his mercies are very great. Don't let me fall into human hands. You see? Because why, did, why does David doesn't want to be at the mercy of man? Because man is unmerciful. What's unmerciful in Tagalog? Malupit? Walang awa. Walang patawad. So then the Lord sent a plague on Israel because he chose the plague. Because God was the one who sent it. And 70,000 Israelite men died. Can you imagine that much? Then God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But when the angel of the Lord was about to destroy the city, God relented concerning the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, Enough! Withdraw your hand now. So he told the angel to stop the destruction. Then the angel of the Lord was then standing at the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. When David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with his drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem, David and the elders clothed in sackcloth fell face down. Okay? David said to God, wasn't I the one? Look, look at the heart of David. He was telling God, Lord, 
I'm the one who sinned. Wasn't I the one who gave the order to count the people? I am the one who has sinned and acted very wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? Okay. What have they done? Lord, my God, please let your hand be against me and against my father's family, but don't let the plague be against your people. Okay. What's the common reaction of a guy who sins against God or somebody who is caught in sin? Here we see David owing up to his sin. A lot of people denies, passes the buck, blames others, etc., etc., etc. But here David, look at, that's why his heart is really after God's own heart. Okay? He doesn't want the innocent, right, to be, to be adversely affected. He was owing the sin. He was telling the Lord, ako na lang. Okay? Who does he remind you of? Okay, Jesus. Okay? He owned the sins of the world. Who else? Okay, Moses. Remember when God got upset with Israel too? Moses says, no, let me. Right? He was even pleading to the Lord, what if you... Find only this much people, they're righteous people. Will you still send destruction? Okay. So verse 18, so the Lord, the angel of the Lord ordered God to tell David and set up an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. David went up at God's command, spoken in the name of the Lord. So look. Uh, David okay, repented of him doing the census. And God told God, G-A-D, the prophet God, told David, based on God's command, that he should set up an altar on the threshing floor of the Jebusite. What's the name of the Jebusite? Ornan. Okay? And, and, and David followed suit, did it. And the Jebusite tried to offer the place for free to David. But, re but David refused to take the freebie, right? How many of us here will like freebies? <laughs> but then, this is what he said. Look, let's look to 2 Samuel 24, okay? Because Ornan was saying, oh, David, you can have my land. You can, you can build your altar here for free. I'll even give, in, give you the sacrifice. The king answered Arona, no. I insist on buying it from you for a price. This is so popular. For I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing. David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 20 ounces of silver. He built an altar to the Lord there and offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord was receptive. Can you? After David did what God told him to do, because God told him to buy it. He didn't tell God, God didn't tell him to get it. Okay? Or, pag binigay sa'yo, kunin mo na. Okay? David, David said, I will not, I will not, I will not what? I will not offer to the Lord my God. What did he say? Burnt offerings that cost me nothing. That's why, we, you know, all of us here, we know that when we offer something to the Lord, it costs us something, right? That money that we could be giving to the Lord, it could cost us, it could be your payment for, for a credit card. It could be your utility bill payment. It could be your grocery money, right? Especially when money is so tight. But, but, but God doesn't want us to give something that does not cost us anything. And besides, the tithe that he asked for is something that doesn't even belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. Okay? The reason why I'm trying to say this is because, guys, you know, I have told you the blessing of the Lord is flowing in this house. I am grieving because sometimes some people are not able to claim the blessings is because they are not fully obedient to the word of the Lord in terms of giving. If you only know how, how much, God, you know, there is a song that says, exceedingly, abundantly, more than anything that we 
ask of or we could ever imagine. That's what's in store for all of us. Okay? Then He will be your help. That's why it says here, where does my help come? I lift my eyes to the mountains. Why are you lifting it, lifting it to the mountains? Because that's where my help comes from. Don't expect an answer from the mountains if you are not doing what He's telling you to do. It's like the teacher will not give you an A if you don't sub submit everything or you do not get an excellent grade in your test. And so the second thing that Mount Moriah reminds us of, it's that's the place where Abraham was commanded by the Lord to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 22. You know, I appreciate the stories of the Bible whenever I see it in black and white. That's why I want you to open your Bibles. This is the sacrifice of Isaac. So after these things, so God gave Abraham success, God gave him prosperity, and most of all, God gave him Isaac. After these things, God, what did God do to Abraham? Tested and said to him, Abraham, Okay, sagot agad si Abraham. Here I am, he answered. The next line is what is a little bit, took a lot of faith. Take your son, he said, your only son. See, when God told him to sacrifice Isaac, God even told him, it's your only son. So Abraham, when he followed God, that commandment of God, he knew he knew the facts. It's not that God was hiding something from him. There were no tricks. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. What mountain was that? Okay. Just Mount Moriah because it's in the land of Moriah. That's why if you will see the picture the, of Mount Zion when we went there, we were blessed because the site was open. We actually went to the place, supposedly, where Abraham sacrificed Isaac, where he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. And then there you will find the city of David where the temple of Jerusalem is. It was built upon the hill of Moriah, which originally was where Isaac, Isaac was supposed to be sacrificed by Abraham. It was where um, it was at the threshing floor where David repented of his sins and he built an altar to the Lord because the Lord was merciful to him. And all of that, that's why you will know that Mount Zion is the seat of the action of God in history. Because he, it's in Mount Zion where he will be coming back. Okay, so now it's called the Temple Mount area. That whole area is called the Temple Mount area. It's the old town of Jerusalem, very close to the Jewish quarters where the Jews live. Uh, they are sharing it with the Arabs now, that area. That's why in some source, you will see that it's, it's not Jews that's selling. Okay, so, so what, does, um, what does someone help, someone's help do to us or for us? Because the, the, the verse, the psalm that we're talking about is um, the help of God. And if you will notice, if you will look at these eight verses in Psalm 121, what is the key word in all these verses? What word is used so many times? What word? Protect. That's why um, God is our protector and the way he helps us is by manifesting protection to all of us, okay? And so, when someone wants to help us, okay, you will know if you are helping by this criteria. Number one, you're willing to offer your resources, okay? Time, talent, and treasure, or whatever is necessary to make it easier for the person that you are helping to accomplish whatever he wants to do. Or in order for you to, sat, to help him with a task or to satisfy a need or sometimes a want. 
That's why if a person who is helping you is making things more difficult for you, is that a help? No, right? You know, sometimes, how many of us here experience being tutored? Raise your hand. Ako lang ang, na, ako lang ang naturuan. Okay. You know, when, you, when somebody is explaining something to you and it becomes more confusing, is that helping? No, that's why sometimes growing up, my kids will... I remember the story of Pastor Jose. You know Sudoku? Okay. So Joseph comes to me. I think he was in fifth grade or sixth grade. And you know, I'm not familiar with Sudoku during that time. And he told me, Mama, my homework is this Sudoku. How many of you love Sudoku here? Nice. Wow. These are the smart people, huh? Okay. And so Joseph, I was trying to figure it out as I was teaching him. And you know, sometimes when I tutor my kids, we fight. Do you fight with your kids when you tutor them? Or you lose patience? Man. And so Joseph was telling me, Mama, I don't understand what you're trying to do. And I, told, I, I wanted to tell Joseph, Joseph, I don't understand it either. <laughs> but my, my pride was too big. And so suddenly, Pastor Jose was just watching us because he cannot help either. I was telling him, Ikaw nga tumulong dito. Sabi niya, ano bang malay ko dyan? Okay? And lo and behold, we have this little skinny kid in the house who is no longer skinny right now in the name of John. Okay? John was always the smartest. And so he told me, Mama, let me teach Joseph. Can you imagine 30 minutes na kaming nag-aaral ni Joseph? Wala pa rin akong maisagot. In five minutes, maybe three minutes, John was able to solve the puzzle. Okay, so at that point, I was not a good helper because I was making it more difficult for him. Okay, so, but then, um, nowadays, whenever Joseph would see his little siblings, especially Joel or James, James is a little, uh, do you notice our kids, the more they get older, the more they don't need our help in homework and they say, I know it. Are your kids like that? And then, and then you will see them struggling with homework, right? So my kids are like that. James now, James claims, Mama, I don't need your help. You don't know my homework, okay? In a way, I'm thankful because I don't have to. <laughs> but my pride tells me, oh, man, my son doesn't need me for homework anymore. Okay. Joel is going into the same stage because he's going seventh grade. And so, two nights ago, uh, do, over Thursday night, we are doing, ho can you imagine we are doing homework at 1 a.m. for a seventh grader? He fell asleep during the night, so we wake up and we do it at 1 a.m. And so, jo jo Joel will always be told by Kuya. Jo the nice thing about Joseph is he's so far away, yet he checks on everybody. So he told Joel, Joel! Why are you struggling with homework in math? All you need to do is ask mama. The reason why I'm engineer is because of mama. Okay? Joseph is nice. He gives credit. Although at a certain point, I was not helping him anymore with, with math. Okay? Anybody here who remembers your calculus? Your derivatives? It's so impractical. Did you ever use derivatives in your practical life? Okay, and so first, that's why it's very important when you ask for help, number one, know where to look for help, right? Don't look for help, don't ask for help for some, from someone who cannot help you, right? He, that person will mess you up. That's why Pastor Jose will say, don't just ask advice from anybody. If you ask relationship advice from somebody who who has broken relationships, the advice probably with you is to break up. Okay? Make sure that the person who is helping you should be able to improve your condition or your situation. Okay? That's why Pastor Jose sometimes is very, very sad because the moment a case comes to us, medyo malalana when it could have started in such a little thing and it would have solved the problem easily. 
You know, it's like, how many of you here when you drive your cars, as long as it's driving, as long as it's running, you're fine with it? Okay? So you know yourself. You know, in car problems, the moment you hear something different, you smell something different, you bring it to the mechanic or you ask help from someone who knows something about cars. If you are failing in school, who do you ask help from? People who finish school. Don't ask help from people who cannot even finish college because they are also struggling. Okay? That's why Pastor Jose would say he would never attend the marriage seminars in Regent. Because the speakers are divorced and remarried people. They, can, they don't know anything about keeping a husband or keeping a wife. So what's the first thing when you ask for help? Okay, make sure you know you go to the right person. Okay, number two, make sure even if you have the right person, but if that person is not willing to help you, it's also useless. Right? They can be able... If the, but they are not willing, they will not also be, you will not be able to get the help that you need, right? You know, if you go to, if you go to Bill Gates and you need $100,000, is he able to help you? Of course, what's 100000 to him, right? But the question is, is he willing to help you, right? It's, 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 it's the second important question. You know, the reason why Pastor Jose and James are in Oklahoma today is because my son moved apartment. Okay? My son was telling me, Mama, I have a big housing. Because I told him, Joseph, please don't increase your rent. You don't need, to, you don't need a bigger place. You're only one person. Why do you need a two-bedroom? You know, why do you need a bigger place? Iloko ko pa nga, meron ka bang tinatago dyan? Okay, and then jo jo Joseph tells me, it's okay, Mama, I'm not paying for it. I told him, you are just making everybody tired. They have to go there and help you. So they're moving right now. And last night, I saw my husband on FaceTime. I told my husband, sweetheart, you look 10 years older. Lapas na hindi niya because Joseph's apartment is on the third level. <laughs> Can you imagine? They have to bring down the... The treadmill, you know, Joseph has all this exercise equipment and all his furnitures. And so I was there. And then Joseph brags to me, Mama, do you know that if I get married, I get $3,000 a month for my housing allowance? I told my son, Joseph, you don't need a wife. <laughs> I, I told him, you don't need a wife right now. Okay? Because the wife... It's more than $3,000 a month. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> so, they're helping. And, and, and the thing is, I volunteered to go. I told my husband, ako na lang tutulong. Okay. Why do you think they did not bring me? <laughs> do, I, do, I, do I qualify for the second question? What's the second question? They're willing. I am willing. Okay. What about the first question? No. James is a better person to help lifting, carry all those things than me. Okay. And so, uh, they have the strength and I don't have. You know, yesterday I asked Je to help me turn off because the weather is so cold now, right? I forgot that. When a house is not heated, what happens to the house? To the pipes in the house. Okay, I like this idea. My husband goes, did you turn on the heat? Because it became 40s, right? 39, right? The other day, the other night, other morning. And Pastor Se goes, did you turn on the heat in our other house? Isn't that so nice? <laughs> Music to my ears. And I told my husband, no, ayoko nga pumunta doon dahil umiiyak lang ako. Every time I go there now, I cry because I remember Elizabeth. And so he said, no, you have to turn it on. Turn, turn on the heat and turn off the water valve for the faucet outside. And so I had to ask for help for Jeff. 
because I was thinking you're gonna need a lot of strength to turn off the valve. <laughs> Did you use a lot of strength to turn off the valve? Okay. And 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 and, and in as much as talking about help, I would like to thank the people who helps me a lot. You know, my dream is to have a new kitchen for three years ago. And so I've been collecting countertops. I have been I've been collecting <laughs> I was able to get quartz countertops and I have and Pastor Jose keeps telling me to move them away because he's fixing the, the yard and everything. And so I'd like to say thank you to Je. This is an advertisement by the way, okay? To Je, to Joffrey, to Dave, to Daniel, to Alexis. Why is it that I mentioned them? Because they are able to lift the countertops, willing, on the pilitan lang. <laughs> Wala na akong pakialam no. I'm sorry, I'm joking, okay? It literally, that's why here, my help, verse 2, what does the verse, can you please recite verse 2? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. How can you get any much more, a better helper than that, right? That means to say God is really able because He made the heaven and the earth. If not, that's why you know He's all-powerful because He had the power to make the heaven and the earth. That's why um, uh, you are mo who are the people that you are most likely to ask help from? I am, huh? Your family? What did you say? Family? Okay. You know, I am so, pastors and I are so blessed. My kids and I are so blessed. We have very good neighbors. Actually, we have excellent neighbors. Okay. My neighbors, for those of you who don't know. Okay. <laughs> Sister Jessica. Man, you know, when I found Elizabeth no longer breathing, I, 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 I I called John right away to call Tita Jessica. It's so funny because Tita Jessica, <laughs> Tita Jessica, because he, she thinks our neighborhood is so safe, she sleeps, she, she keeps her door open, her front door open. Her front door is open, but her storm door is locked. So John, was, John didn't know what to do. And so he went to the side door of Je and Sha. See, we, I have very good neighbors, Je and Sha. And because John just woke up, he looked like a <laughs> Je. Je was so upset with Sha because they thought that John was an intruder. <laughs> because they have a camera. <laughs> and so they thought it was an intruder. What was John doing? Was he screaming? He's trying to keep the, open the door. Then we have a funny neighbor. Okay? My, my kids are so funny. Because um, yeah, I sought the help of Jessica. And then now we have another new neighbor. Nana Ligaya is our neighbor. Together with Max. So if you want to move into our neighborhood, you are more than welcome. Okay? Right, Jessica? Jessica will finish her. Her mansion, she's putting up a, an addition to her home so we can invite more people into the neighborhood. Kulang na lang pala si Mr. Rogers, no? Okay. However, there are some people that you will not thinking about asking help from. Why? Pride. Okay, maybe inaway mo. Tapos ngayon, hihingin ka ang tulong. Okay? <laughs> it's like husband and wife, right? We fight, and then my husband will tell me, I'm hungry. You know, when we're in the middle of a fight, and he tells me, I'm hungry, gusto ko itapon yung pagkain sa Is that normal? Okay, thank you, Anna May. Minsan nga, oh man, I'm so evil sometimes. Minsan sabi ko, <laughs> Pastor Rose is so good in, in tasting 
He knows right away when something is off. <laughs> Minsan, once lang yon. Talagang sobrang galit ako sa kanya. Okay. Sobrang galit ko. Okay. Pero nag-repent na ako. Okay? Pitatawad na ako ng Diyos. Okay. Or, you hesitate to ask help from them most of the time because you don't have a good relationship with them. Right? Because if you have a good relationship with a person, sometimes they don't even have to ask for help. They see you are in need. They're going to give your... I appreciate Sister Diana. Guys, Sister Diana is a very helpful person. Okay? But of course, she also needs help. Don't take advantage of her. Okay? She can do anything. Right, Diana? <laughs> Diana, I need help in the kitchen. Oh, tulong. Maya, maya. Sister Anne, marunong din ako magtahi. Aba, yung jacket ni Jan na, na nasira, ba, nagawa ni Diana. Instead na ibalik sa Canada Goose, nagawa ni Diana. Uh, and then she's very good in landscaping. Okay? But my help doesn't, I don't have to look to the mountains to, <laughs> to see you. Okay? And so, uh, either you always, or, or, or sometimes when people always has to, if people are not willing, they will always have an excuse not to help you. Right? Oh, I have to, you know, sometimes when you hear excuses, you know it's just an excuse. Okay? Because I hear my kids among each other, DJ, can you help me? Oh, I, I'm studying. <laughs> and then you snoop into her room. <laughs> She's watching Netflix. <laughs> How many kids are like that? Right? You ask for A person who doesn't want to give help will have any reason not to give help. Oh, uh, can you wash the dishes? Mama, my hands are so tired. What did you do? I was writing my test. Okay. Any reason. Okay? Or they just don't want to help. And sometimes these people, people who, because you know, I always, I always, I always, um, you know what comes around goes around. You reap what you sow. So in my mind, I should always help whenever I can. Because someday, I'm going to need help. And you know how as parents, sometimes it's not you that needs the help. It's your kids who needs the help. You know, like, like some of the favors that I got was not because I helped those people. Some of the favors that I got is because my parents helped those people. You know, like Pastor Jose was telling you that we got favor from the U.S. Embassy. That's because they were, because those embassy pe- people were friends of my dad. And they helped me because of my dad. If not for my dad, you think they would have helped me? They didn't know me. Right? That's why some of us here are so blessed because our parents, the favor that they gave to other people, we get it back in return. And the wonderful thing about this is that when we look to the mountains, our help comes from the Lord. Number one, He's not only able. Number two, He's willing. That's why as long as you have a good relationship with him, you will be fine. Amen? You know, you don't hesitate, right? When, when you come to prayer, sometimes when I come to prayer, I don't even have to say, Lord, you are the maker of heaven and earth. I adore you, I praise you. No, I just have to tell him, Lord, can you please help me? I'm having a hard time with my son. Or ito na naman kami ng Pastor Jose ko. Okay? It's, it's, it's very direct. There's no palabok. Do you call it palabok? Walang paligoy-ligoy. You don't have to... What, what you want to say, you can freely say it. You are not afraid that he might get offended. God is not like that. That's why in any... That's why... That, you see the importance of a relationship? Because if you want to ask help from somebody and you are the person who keeps taking, getting help, that person one day will be fed up and say, this person is a freeloader. 
this person is a taker. The, a relationship is always two-way. It's a give and take relationship. Besides, if you if you if the person that you always help or give favor to is a taker, you will get sick and tired. Even if you're very generous, you will tell yourself, what is wrong with this person? That's an ungrateful person. That's why God, even though he doesn't need our help, he doesn't need our tithes, he doesn't need our offering, it's our expression of gratitude to him. I mean, do we need, do we need, you know, when we get old, right? Our children, my, my prayer, Pastor say, and my prayer is that our children will be so established by the Lord and living godly so that when they get old, they will be independent, right? We tell our children, or Joseph, John, DJ, all the way to Joel, when we get old, you don't have, you don't have to take care of us. We will take care of ourselves. God will take care of us. Okay? But, wag na kayo sa amin, di ba? If ever we give you, it's because we want to give it to you or we are able to give it to you. But even if we old parents don't want to ask help from our kids, doesn't it make you feel good when your children gives you something? No matter how small it is. You know, sometimes DJ will tell me like, like three days ago, DJ was telling me, Mama, I know you're so busy, you don't want to cook. Do you want? Let's order chipotle. Ano ka, DJ? Siniswerte. <laughs> you know what my daughter said? Mama, I'm paying for it. That's, that's the freebie that we like, right? When our kids start to... Growing up, my kids will just say, Mama, can I, can, can I buy you a sweet tea from McDonald's, which is a dollar? But now, I see my kids, they... Sometimes I tell my kids, keep your money. I don't need those things. Keep your money. Doesn't it... It's not that we're looking for something from them. It's just that we know that they appreciate us. They are great. It's not the amount. It's not the gift. It's the thoughtfulness. It's the action. It's the thought that counts. You know, I even tell my kids, I even liked it when you were younger because I would get a card that is handmade from you. Now, some of my kids, they would give me a Mother's Day card. Minsan wala pang takasulat. Mama, <laughs> sabi ko, how would I know who, who, who this? <laughs> One time I got a birthday gift. Can you imagine the card was in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung intentionally binili yun o napulot ang yung <laughs> But still I appreciate it. Because they wanted to give me something. See, even... And, 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 and even our younger kids, you know, I, I taught my kids not to be materialistic. It's the thought that counts. You know, kahit bottled water lang yan. You know, they, you know when, when I come home and sometimes my kids will tell me, Mama, you don't have to cook. We'll cook dinner. I appreciate it when some young people here come on Monday nights in our house because my kids, they cook they tell me, Mama, you don't have to worry about cooking. We'll take care of the food. Even if it's just chips. And Okay? Um, but what I'm saying is that if you want to be a big help, if you want help from other people, be a helper yourself. And our earthly relationships are the pattern for our relationship with the Lord. If we cannot help our, our friends, our family, whom we can see, right? How can we help move the kingdom of God? You know, the, the help that God needs is not in heaven. The help that God needs is on earth. And one of those help is service to the Lord. You know, Pastor Rose and I are very appreciative of those who clean the church. I mean, look, Brother, brother Willie painted the church during COVID. Okay? Um, sometimes we see people, who, Sister Diana um, does the landscaping whenever she's free. 
you know, uh, people in the kitchen who washes the dishes, the pots, and the pans. Okay? Those who cook for us, Tita Jo, Tita Annie, they're getting old. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you help me later? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know what God is looking for? God is looking for initiative. I appreciate Shao when she tells me, Sister Anne, do you want me to bring Joel to school? Or does you want me to take him home with me? Because those are relieving me of a lot of, a lot, a lot of uh, time also. Although, you know what, parents? Your kids love it whenever you pick them up and you bring them to school yourself. You know? Pero lang kung may gusto silang itago. Okay? And so, it's a give and take. You should always reciprocate. In, you know, God is such... Is there a word reciprocator? No. Uh, God is such a good person to be in a relationship with because He outgives you. He will, he will never shortchange you. you know, I'm excited when I pray with some of you and then your prayers are so answered. You know, I'm, so, I'm so excited when Sister Nikki got the job that she wanted. Amen! That's why we know our help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. You know, some of you have struggled, but then pastors and I were so happy when you told me that you passed the board. You know, that's why we know blessings are flowing in this church because it might not be financial. It's good health. Okay, do we have people here who are sick of cancer? Even if we get sick of cancer, we believe God for healing. That's our help. Our help is not just dollars and cents. It's not just money. Good relationships. We are so blessed in this church that our marriages, I would like to say, are, ve are very strong. Aba, walang nag-amen. Ikaw nag-amen, wala kang asawa. <laughs> Kahit na, okay? You know what I mean? I mean, there is no marriage that is stress-free. Is there a marriage here that doesn't have any stress? Okay. Siguro patay na yung asawa niyo. Wala kayo stress. And so in Psalm 121, the psalmist not only knows that his help definitely comes from the Lord, but he's also confident and assured of God's ability to help. Okay? Is there any help that we need that God cannot give? Right? He can cure you of cancer. He can provide for all your needs. He can keep you safe at all times. Look. In what ways is God's help to us manifested through His protection? So protection is one of the ways by which God manifests His help towards us. If He doesn't protect us from the elements, sickness or disease, we'd be sick. And that's a big, what's that, abala. I mean, if somebody is sick in the family, it's a big burden, right? Especially if you catch the flu, you're, it, it tends to go around the house. You know, my daughter, um, my daughter yesterday, because she volunteers at Lori Children's Hospital downtown, she is mandated to have a flu shot. Nobody in our family aside from her. And she only started getting the flu shot last year when she started volunteering at Lori Hospital. So yesterday, I took her for a flu shot. And last night, she was, her fever was so high and she was vomiting. She vomited everything that she was eating. And so, <clears throat> and so I, I was telling her that um, just stay home. You'd be fine. It's just that you're having an adverse reaction towards the flu shot. Because we believe she is the healed whom the enemy is trying to make sick. We were blessed when we found out that faith, all the results came in negative. That's why we know that the help of the Lord is just, is just around the corner. So do you know that protect comes from two Latin words? Pro, 
which means in front, and tegere means to cover. So if I'm here, the protection of the Lord is where? In front of me, covering me. Okay? But in the latter verses, we always find that He is right beside us. Right? If you look at verse, verse 5, okay? He is right beside us. Okay? So in verse 3 it says, He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, indeed, the protector of Israel does not sleep or slumber. What is the picture of a person sleeping? Okay, S-L-I-P-P-I-N-G. Okay, so when you sleep, what happens? Okay, what's the action first? Like you're walking on a wet floor on an ice, what happens? Your feet slides unintentionally or accidentally, right? For a short distance, okay? And then it causes you to lose what? Your balance. And so when you lose your balance or your footing, what happens? You fall. And when you fall, you can either be injured, right? Or it can cause you a whole lot of problems. And if you are holding something, what happens to what you're holding when you fall or you slip? Okay, it will fall, okay? That's why um, it says here, he will not allow your foot to sleep. Why? Because you doesn't want. God, God's protection is in front of you. He knows what is about to happen. So he doesn't want you to, to get hurt. He doesn't want you to get sick. He doesn't want you, for lack of a better word, to be damaged. Okay? That's why the, the, ish, the picture here of not allowing you to sleep, as a protection is he doesn't want you to be harmed or he doesn't want you to, to be injured. You know, like, like skiers in the mountain, when they slip, right? When they're climbing the mountain, what's going to happen to them? They can roll down the mountainside and can cause them their death. And us, if we are not careful, some of our slips or some of our falls can cause us maybe not physical death but emotional or spiritual death especially when we sin right like they say some people nadudulas they sleep married men sleep into the into the bosom of other women right I don't know, in, in Filipino, we say, nadulas yan sa ibang babae o nadulas yan sa ibang lalaki. Okay? Um, it says here, He will not let you stumble. Okay? Why will He not allow? Because He's watching over us. That's why He will not let you sleep. He does not slumber, nor does He sleep. Okay? Because in verse 4, it repeats it. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not sleep, or slumber. Okay? What is the difference between slumber and sleeping? Is there a difference there? Be careful, Joanne. <laughs> What's the difference between slumber and sleeping? Slumber is when you are sleeping lightly or you doze off. It's like a nap, a cat nap. Okay, sleeping has a picture of like deep sleep. Like you in, 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 in slumber, you have not completely lost consciousness. Huh? Okay. And, but sleeping will have an, ide an idea that you have um, lost a little bit of consciousness because you're in deep sleep. You know, if you, are, if you are only slumbering, you can still hear the noise around you, right? You still know when somebody, you know, Pastor Rose and I, um, sometimes you forget to lock our, our bedroom door. My kids, we have, I have some kids who likes to use our bathroom. So they will think they're sneaking. But Pastor Rose is such a light sleeper, he will wake up and he will say, who is that? Okay? Even when somebody, you know, if my kids go home late, 
he will still hear the car tick tick. So my John will say, Papa, I went home this. What do you mean you went home? The, I heard your tick tick at this time. Okay, we don't need a camera. Pastor Jose has eyes behind the back of his head. Kaya minsan disadvantage sa akin yun. <laughs> Sometimes when I shop, <laughs> I will tell. And, and you know what? I found out it's not only me. There's some wives in this church when they shop. You know, one time DJ told me, Mama, where did you go? I told my, my daughter, I, Mama, what did you buy? Nothing. Because I went inside the house without anything. <laughs> okay? <laughs> my daughter tells me, Mama, we came home, worship practice is done, and you're not home, and you did not buy anything? I don't believe you. <laughs> I, my kids know me. Okay, several days later, he tells me, Mama, you're wearing a new dress. <laughs> so when did you buy that? I told my daughter, when I told you I didn't buy anything. Okay? Even Pastor Jose is my, is my shopper police now. Okay? Shopping police. When I go here, he will tell me, is that a new... <laughs> And I will tell pastor, say, ano ka ba? Matagal na to. <laughs> I'm not so good at lying, so my husband knows. Okay? Anyway, it says here, he will, not, he will not allow you to stumble. The one who watches over you will not stumble. See? He will not only not allow us to stumble, that's NLT. The one who watches over us will not stumble. You know, sometimes when you say, Bahawa ka dahil um, it's icy, I might slip. Right? Sometimes, it's not only you who will stumble. Who will stumble? The one you are holding on to. Mama, siya pang mag-stumble, ikaw pang madamay. Right? Or both of you. But it says in NLT, He will not allow you to stumble, but even the person, the person who is watching you will never stumble, and that's God. Right? The difference between sleeping and stumbling is that when you stumble, you hit your, while walking or running, you hit your foot on something. That's why, what's going to happen? Okay, you will fall. Okay, you can lose your balance too. It's the same ending. You can get injured, you can hurt, you can get hurt, you can die. Okay, and so, and so, how many of you are runners here? No runners? Okay. Bike, biker. <laughs> Hoping to be runners. Joseph told me, Mama, you need to exercise. No amount of exercise books it will let you lose weight. And so I told Joseph, Joseph, really for real, I'm going to exercise already. So Joseph told me, Mama, when you exercise, buy Lululemon. Okay, and, 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 and because Joseph buys those, Pastor Jose tells him, you're like a girl, why do you use that brand? <laughs> Joseph is, we will be watching. And so, and so, I got a blessing, I bought Lululemon. Joseph was upset with me this morning, said, Mama, you bought, why didn't you, get, why didn't you use my card, my discount card? He's got a membership card. I told him, don't worry, Joseph, I had a discount coupon. Okay? And then Joseph told me, Mama, no matter if that's Lululemon, if you don't exercise and you just wear it, it's useless. <laughs> so today I use it. Okay? But what am I saying is that when you stumble okay, or slip, something bad is most likely to happen to you. But the nice thing is, the verse is, He will not allow your, feet, your foot to sleep because He doesn't slumber. He doesn't, even take, takes, he doesn't even take a quick nap. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not sleep. Or, isn't that so comforting that God is watching over us, protecting us from all harm? How many times if you look back in your past, you almost got killed? 
na haging, me it's so easy, my, my remembrance is always the time that I got hit by a car. So many times God spared us from an accident, so many times spared us from sickness, so many times spared us from bankruptcy, you know. You know, when you, in, you, when you make a wrong investment, it can wipe out your finances. But so many times, though so many times, God is watching over us. You know why? Let's open our Bibles to 1 Samuel 2, verse 9. He guards the step of his, the steps, okay? That means all our steps of his, whose steps does he guard? His faithful ones. But the wicked perish in darkness for a person does not prevail by his own strength. Verse 10, those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder in the heavens against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give power to his king. He will lift up the horn of his anointed. It means he will give him strength. Okay? So here, the way God protects us is that he guards our steps. Right? Guarding here is a picture of looking at the... <laughs> You know, the security, what's the difference between the security guards in the Philippines and the security guards here in the States? Huh? <laughs> Number one, do you see a lot of security guards here? In the Philippines, you enter a store, there's a secure. Right? Ultimo sari sari store, may secure. Right? That means to say you need more security in the Philippines. And so, what does those, those secure do? They keep an eye on you all the time. So sometimes it's so embarrassing because you think like you're going to steal something. Do you know that in, um, what's the Costco equivalent in the Philippines? SNR? Okay, do you know that in SNR there, you, like Costco or, or Sam's Club, you can only enter using with your wallet. You cannot bring a purse. Right? Because pastors and I went there, and it says there by the door, no backpacks, no handbags, only wallet. That's how untrustful or suspicious the store owners are of the people who will be shopping. Because they cannot watch you all the time. You know, they say if somebody will shoplift, they will always be creative in shoplifting. They will do anything. Uh, they will do anything just to be able to shoplift. You know, um, I've I've seen in um, in in, uh, in on the internet where people will wear multiple coats just to be able to get out with that. Co we know a rider, rider. We know a rider. She was caught. Uh, shoplifting, was that a mink coat? Like in the tens of thousands of dollars. That's a rich person. She's a superstar. Huh? Klepto. Some people are sick. Right? I remember. Um, uh, in short, the way God guards us is will is in such a way that he, we will feel safe and we will feel secure. You know, as parents, we cannot guard our kids 24-7. They go to school, you don't even know whom they are talking to. Right? Especially those of you with teenagers or those of you with young adult kids, you don't know who's flirting with them. Maybe the devil is flirting with them. Right? But I always tell my kids, especially Joseph, I tell my kid, Joseph, Joseph, don't forget, I'm not with you. Papa is not with you. But somebody is watching over you. So one of my rules for him is don't let a, a person of the opposite sex to be in your apartment. And it's just going to be just the two of you. Because we put safeguards. Right? Uh, it's not that I don't trust my son. I don't trust the devil. Especially, 
especially raging hormones. That's why we put a rule in the house, if your last name is not nationalist, you cannot go up the stairs. Okay? You, you can only by invitation. Because we don't, we are very protective of our kids, right? How many of you are very protective of your kids? You'd rather be overprotective than, what's the opposite of overprotective? Underprotective. <laughs> Lax. You know, if you will look at the people who were in, their children went astray. It's because their hold and their, they lost hold, they lost control over their children. You know, even what my kids watch, you know, I told Nolly one time, brother Nolly one time, that uh, our, our Kevin and Kyle, the, the playmates of my kids in a video, because one time, Joel was so excited te telling me that I told somebody online I was playing with about Jesus. You know, there are some creepy people online, in online gaming. I, I told jo Joel, Joel, you can only play with Kevin and Kyle and people from the church. I don't want to see you playing with anybody because there's a lot of pedophiles in there. Okay, so God protects us by guarding our steps. In the same manner, look at verse 10, verse, verse 9. But the wicked perish in darkness. He doesn't watch the steps of the wicked. That is why they are perishing. Where are they perishing? In the darkness. Why? Because there is no light there. The way God wants, the way God is watching over us, the way God is protecting us, is by giving us light in, 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 in our ways, in our walk. And what's that light there? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You know, if you have Jesus in you, and the word of God, the word of Jesus, that is the light. That's why if you don't, if you don't, if you're not following the word, you don't have the light in you. Don't expect God to be watching over your steps. Because that's one way by which God is lighting up your way. You don't want to fall, you don't want to stumble, you don't want to slip, you don't want to trip. Have the light of the world in you. You know, um, it's 1226. Um, I will share more tonight, but I'll, I'll give you a personal testimony. You know, I, the last time I preached, I told you about how Elizabeth wanted to make sure that I am protected, right? She wants to make sure that the house that she leaves me will really go to me and it cannot be contested. And so she hired another lawyer on top of her current lawyer to make sure that there's enough documentation so it will not be contested. Because the lawyer was saying, it can, anybody can contest a will, especially that I'm not related to her. But if you are well documented, she will not be able to get the house. You know, right now that we were looking at the value of the house, it's it's close to 400,000. Can you believe it? God's protection, God's, God's provision. And so, and so and I, I, I appreciate Jessica because Jessica was telling me because like th one week before she died, she had an episode where I thought she was dead. She was not waking up. And Jessica was telling me, that's why you have to finish all the documents because she's just waiting to finish that. To protect me and so I was claiming to the Lord Lord you know you will not allow your blessing to be stolen from me because my help comes from you the maker of heaven and earth do you know I was expecting that the that the daughter of Elizabeth and her grandson will contest it that's why Elizabeth knows her daughter. She wanted to make sure it's sarado kandado. What's that? Se secured. Now it's um, contest proof. Do you know that when she died unexpectedly, and you know, I, those of you who don't know, she died in her sleep, and that was our that was an answer to prayer. No pain, 
she just died peacefully in her sleep. And so, the way Elizabeth set it up is that I'm the own, I have power of attorney for everything. Actually, she did not even, she wanted to give, she wanted to disinherit her daughter and give everything to me and to Lion's Heart. And it's a lot of money. It's in the hundreds of thousands. Okay? But then Pastor Jose was telling me, you know what? Didra is a soul. You don't want her to hate Christians, that she was disinherited because of a pastor's wife and its salvation for her and her grandson and the other family members who are, you know, Elizabeth was telling me, you know, and they're not visiting me. The last time my daughter visited me was January. But when I'm dying, I'm very sure they're all going to come because of the money. And so I appreciated her so much for doing that. You know, God's protection on me and my husband and on the blessing that was given to us. Can you believe it? I was just expecting the house. But then we didn't finish doing the house. And then suddenly God took her. And then the last time Deidre and I saw each other, you know, God's protection is giving you favor, is by giving you favor in the sight of other people. You know, we were, we were braced for the contest. All Deidre did was that, Anne, thank you so much for making the last days of my mom so happy. Because when I called her, she would say, I'm so happy Anne is here. And then she told me, she was telling me, about what we were doing, you know. That's why my kids were complaining. Most of the time, I'm in the other house. And so she told me, I wish you would keep the house. So I told her, you know what, Didra, we're going to keep the house. Because the reason why Elizabeth gave that, because she told me she wants that when I am old, I don't have to be like her where I don't have a child across the street from me. So that's why we're going to keep the house. So she said, so what are your plans? So I told her because I'll, 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 I have to start paying taxes and all the exemptions of your mom is going to be out. So the taxes will be so high. So I told her, in the meantime, we're going to rent it out unless one of my kids get married. And should I give it to my kids or should I sell it to my kids? <laughs> what do you think? I will not give anything that costs me nothing. <laughs> but you know what, guys? The daughter told me, you know, mom said that she wants you to have money. Man, she told me, and the house is not finished. She said, so she, so they gave me money on top of the how can you beat that god is so good it's an unexpected additional blessing that's why i'm telling you look up to the hills we don't have to look to the hills anymore god is in us through the holy spirit he's dwelling in us that's why whatever help we need, it's already in us. It's already available. But you need to be able to develop that relationship with the Lord. You need to make sure you are complying with all his requirements. That's why I wish for all of you guys, I wish that you are all walking in the blessing the way we are. I am not bragging. It's just that I want you guys to have what God is giving to the people in this church. And I know because we are not the only ones being blessed. We have some of you. Look at your testimonies. I told you last time the blessing of the Lord in this house is already in the hundreds and th of thousands of dollars. In good health, in promotions, in passing the board. Can you imagine what kind of blessings our kids will be having? So where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. 
He is not only able, He is willing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Why don't we all stand up?